Matt Whitaker, former U.S. Acting Attorney General. This is such a great conversation about America, our future, what's going to save our republic. We have a great football player. Matt Whitaker is here. Matt. They tried to bury me. They didn't realize I was a C. It's a Whitaker. Former Acting U.S. Attorney General. Under President Trump. I'm going to be an unwavering supporter of law enforcement. Welcome to Liberty and Justice with your host, Matt Whitaker. Welcome to Liberty and Justice. I'm your host, Matt Whitaker. Uh, Remember, you can catch us anywhere that podcasts are distributed, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and uh, every place where you listen to other podcasts. And then, obviously, on Whitaker.tv. Everything I'm doing is at Whitaker.tv. And remember, this show premieres every Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern on CPAC Now. I am joined by John Adams. And uh, this is not a historical recreation of our founding father, but John Adams, a distant relative of the John Adams, uh, is the owner of Liberty Cigar Company. Um, And I've had an occasion to run into John uh, at several CPACs, and I've enjoyed some of his cigars. And I just thought it was going to be a great conversation uh, to have him on the show, talk about cigars, talk about our founding fathers. And uh, John, welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you. I'm so glad we got a chance to connect again. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I I think I want to get into first sort of how you started a cigar company. Uh, you know, one of my favorite sayings about most small businesses is if you want to make a small fortune in small business, you start with a large fortune and invest in a cigar company, for example. So how did you how did you get started? And, uh, you know, what what uh, drove you to to create this company in the first place? Well, it's uh, uh, your um, your instinct there is is accurate in this case. Uh, I, I'm a commercial real estate developer, and I decided I would start a, a cigar company. But it's it's actually starting to take off. We founded it uh, seven or eight years ago, so actually longer than that. Uh, but um, uh, it's just such a joy, so it's not difficult. But uh, uh, to um, to uh, go fourth every day my wife it's out of all the businesses it's her favorite uh she she doesn't like the development business the real estate development business she loves the cigar business because of people like yourself that she gets to meet and talk to and Lindsay and and uh, the whole gang but uh um uh i just started um uh, uh smoking cigars with friends and uh they'd asked me to tell an obscure story about american history one that they didn't know and uh, which was easy given the level of education in today's world and uh one day I just decided I'd, I'd match the stories with the cigars, and I put bands on there, uh, built a website, which is still the one we have today, and uh, my friends um, uh, would order and uh, you know, from all over the country, and uh, they started telling people, and that's how it grew. So uh, didn't intend for it to. And we'll put a, yeah, we'll put a link to LibertyCigars.com on my show notes so that everybody can enjoy uh, your cigars uh, if, they, if that's what they want to do. You know, what... You know, when, every time we've run into each other, we get we get into these uh, obscure figures in American history that, quite frankly, shouldn't be obscure. In fact, uh, you know, I, I I stumped you because I just read this. It was you know <laughs> what founding <laughs> father behind all four uh, main documents. There's only one, and you were like, I know this, but I don't. And and then when I told it to you, he was like, Oh yeah. Uh, so tell me the story of Mr. Sherman, and uh, you know how. How he's relevant to the founding of our republic? Well, you did stump me. I, I was actually as uh, we were standing there, and of course there were other people there, and so um, I was trying to go through in my mind uh, all the uh, thirteen colonies and each each one of the founders, and I made it as far as New Jersey, and I'm like, "Oh, you just need to tell me." So, uh, yeah, Roger Sherman, as you indicated, was the only um, of all the founding fathers to sign the four seminal documents that uh, uh, were part of the creation. He signed the Association. Uh, document which was basically the, the states uh, uh, promising to themselves and each other that they would not um, uh, trade with England, and then uh, the Declaration of Independence, um, and the uh, Constitution, um, and, um, and the Confederation, and the Confederation, as well. He's an extraordinary man. I, I, he grew up in uh, uh, in poverty, abject poverty. In fact, his father was a cobbler. He took over the cobbler business after his father uh, passed away, um, 
and then uh, found some survey tools. And as you, you uh, know, the country was growing at that time, and surveyors were uh, 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 were uh, held in high regard, uh, almost as much as the trial lawyers, like uh, P- Patrick Henry, and uh, were they were they were considered to be pretty um, important citizens. And so he he taught himself that trade. He learned. Um, in the surveying business, uh, how to uh, negotiate and reconcile property claims. So he learned a lot about the law. So he uh, became a lawyer, uh, had two wives, uh, had a total of 15 children, of course, served his country all the way through until uh, his ripe old age. And um, his life was just filled with uh, with accomplishment. And he came from virtually nothing, except for Hamilton. Uh, he came furthest to the greatest, uh, I would say, in terms of his sort of life journey. Why do you think uh, Mr. Sherman is not venerated uh, like some of our other founding fathers? Why are Jefferson and Washington and uh, and Adams and and others, uh, why do they get more notoriety than uh, like a Roger Sherman would? Well, first of all, I think we've we've lost our capacity to revere. Um, and, and I, I call it, uh, I think uh, Bill Morrow just brought up presentism, uh, where you uh, try to apply today's standards to the past, which is obviously fraught with, um, with problems. But um, uh, I call it chronological narcissism, where we, where we need other people to do our own investigative work. And so the, all, the, all the icons, you know, Jefferson, Washington, Adams, Franklin, et cetera, Hamilton, uh, um, uh, get uh, notoriety because we we don't we don't want to discover we don't want to revere we we well, uh, we've got this insane notion that we're okay the way we are now that uh, you know this this whole notion that uh, you be you is I hear that all the time I'm like well I, I don't want to be me I want to be better I want to be <laughs> I, I don't like me uh, and I don't mean that uh, in a derogatory sense I'm just saying I, I want to strive to be more like Washington I mean uh, my daughter for instance was. Um, uh, travel with us. We went up to Lake Erie to uh, unveil one of our new cigars, and we traveled through nine states. And and, uh, and everywhere we went, there was Washington's influence. She was astonished. She's 19 years old, and uh, she was. Uh, we went to Fort Necessity and found out that he started the First World War there, <laughs> effectively. And then uh, and then he he built uh, the the Braddock's Road, uh, and which was later widened. And then he advocated for the National Road that went all the way through to Illinois from Vir- Virginia. And uh, then we travel up. Through West Virginia, we see his mark everywhere, and then we get to uh, Alexandria, and she finds out that as a 16, 17-year-old, 16-year-old, he, he uh, helped to survey that town. And, um, and then, then, of course, we get to D.C., and she sees Washington everywhere there, and, and it's just she was astounded that there was so much influence by one man in this country. And uh, Roger Sherman didn't quite have quite the influence that Washington did, but he is no less an important figure, uh, ultimately. He... He, um, and not to be overly long-winded, but he's the one that came up with the, that's why Con, uh, Connecticut's called the Constitution State, uh, uh, because he helped to broker the, the compromise on the, the House and the, and the Senate, which allowed for uh, the popular uh, population to dictate the House and the, and the two senators for every state. He was a very small state advocate, uh, uh, and, and he created uh, a lot of that. He was also on the Committee of Five uh, that's memorialized on the Jefferson Memorial at the very apex of the uh, of the uh, building. There you see the five, and of course Jefferson's in front. But he's one of he's Livingston, Adams, Franklin, and himself, and then Jefferson is the one five who uh, one of the five who drafted the Declaration of Independence. Just an extraordinary life. Yeah, you know, I, I was re- reading uh, a book recently. It was about the. Um, essentially the philosophy that underpinned our founding fathers and, and sort of led to the creation of this great nation. It talked about sort of, you know, the, the Romans and the Greeks and how, you know, kind of their experience and, and, and the books written about those times, uh, you know, really helped sort of them form the American system of government. Um, you know, and also, you know, I've heard you talk about uh, the fact that they, you know, more than it, really any other generation studied human nature and you know things like the Catiline conspiracy you know you say that in a modern america and people are going to look <laughs> at you as, uh obviously you know uh what the Catiline conspiracy meant to our founding fathers but could you talk just a little bit about you know sort of the not only the influences uh, at that time at the founding of our republic 200 almost 250 years ago but but like now how much money and just real politics influence uh you know our system and we've kind of forgotten 
about you know Greek and Roman philosophy and and why our system was built to you know counter uh, really the worst of, of, of human nature and not you know and not not uh, counting on people to be virtuous. Well, that, you, you hit the nail on the head there. They they. Um... They were uh, more steeped in, in study of human nature than any generation before or since, and they um, they knew that man was fallen, uh, and that uh, they they operated from that premise. And so everything they did was designed to elevate uh, humanity and to uh, consider and guard uh, guard against uh, the uh, human impulses. And they studied uh, all the great uh, republic, obviously uh, the first republic. Uh, in Rome, and then obviously the Greek philosophers were the bedrock of that um, of, of that civilization. Um, I th- I think uh, if you look at Madison and Adams in particular, they were they were constantly trying to figure out um, uh, the the essence of human nature in order to create systems whereby we could operate uh, and, and self govern. And, and just to their credit. Uh, it's just absolutely brilliant because it had never been done before. And I think, as you know, they had to, uh, in order to matriculate to the, uh, to the Harvard, et cetera, et cetera, they had to, uh, they had to write in Greek. They, had to, they studied everybody from Cicero to Caesar, and they looked at all their human frailties and, 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 and um, l- learn from them. Yeah. Yeah, so. and they were, these are, as you read about, these individuals and, you know, sort of how their personal libraries, what were in their personal libraries, like Jefferson and, you know, how, you know, and, and, you know, Washington obviously was kind of pretty much self-taught and, uh, you know, didn't, wasn't as book smart as maybe Jefferson and, you know, Hamilton obviously uh, devoured books uh, and, and, you know, sort of probably was one of the smartest human beings ever to live. Unfortunately, you know, he uh, had his own challenges and, and, and experienced an early demise because of his his passions, if you will, um, and his really you know hatred for Aaron Burr. And uh, but you know the the system is designed to your point to uh, you know to self correct and to you know have have this accommodation and balance of power that that is uh, we see play out currently in, in our in re, you know our experience in, in everyday. America and the you know the fact that the House and the Senate are in co- you know in count you know uh, can't always come to an, a compromise or an agreement and obviously the executive branch and, and is designed uh, to counter the Congress and you know the Supreme Court obviously was designed uh, equally to stay out of the political influences the political winds of any given moment in time and so it's it's just a beautiful um, system having worked in it myself. You know, I've, I've, I've been frustrated by the design, but I also equally understand why those safeguards are built in and why you have that that natural tension. It's, I mean, it's, it's, if to, to have endured as successfully as it has uh, for almost, you know, 250 years, I think is, is really a, a, a testament to, to how learned uh, those, those folks that you celebrate uh, through your cigars are. Um, you know, are so. Where are we? Um, you know, in in the cigar lifetime. I mean, you you know, you we were talking about how you plan it out years ahead. That you you know, looking three four years uh, for you know, kind of events and historical moments. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Uh, how how your cigar company is dramatically influenced by American history and the patriots uh, that have served. Well, uh, I, I, when you were talking, I was struck. Uh, I used to think that uh, if you if you look at the population of the United States, it was about two and a half million at the time of the um, revolution. But uh, the cities were small. You could fit um, in uh, uh, Boston, for instance. You could fit the entire population. It wouldn't even fill up Sanford Stadium uh, in uh, in Athens, Georgia. I mean, it would it wouldn't fill half of it, and yet. That gave us uh, John Adams and Sam Adams and Paul Revere mm-hmm. and Joseph Warren and uh, I mean if if we go uh, to a Georgia Bulldog game, pardon me for being the uh, uh, I did want to ask you about the tight end room. Uh, <laughs> the and I'll have to hang up. <laughs> uh, I, if we went into there, including myself as a, as a ticket holder um, there at Sanford Stadium in Athens, uh, there wouldn't be even one 
John Adams or, or one Joseph Warren or one Pat, Patrick Henry. Or John. It's just astounding to me that, uh, that God, uh, in, in providential way, put these people. Uh, and I, I think that it's important, and that's why we um, founded the company, was to just tell America's magnificent story to realize how lucky we are that those those men and women, uh, we've got a line of um, uh, tea coming out that actually features the women in the same way we uh, did the, uh, and we have candles coming out, which uh, is the same thing. But uh, anyway, we uh, it, uh, we just want to take the personalities, take their lives, and honor them with a cigar. And each cigar mirrors the personality that one that we're honoring. And so uh, I, I just I get excited about it. I can tell you can too. I'm just in awe that uh, that that we are uh, still able to. Uh, to actually benefit uh, and, and have fallen heir to this wonderful country. And I just want to make sure that we don't mess it up. It, it, um, yeah, people used to ask me, you're always talking about the founding fathers and, the, and history. No, nobody really cares. Why do you do it? And, and I, 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 I used to tell them, I said, because when everything falls apart, there will be a light. And it will be Jefferson, and it will be Adams, and it will be Washington and Franklin. And that light, uh, like Tom Modette said, they, they left the light on for us uh, in the old uh, commercial. Um, and we just need to make sure that that light is not obscured, uh, and we need to make sure it stays uh, bright. So yeah. that's that's why we do it. It is the guiding light. It's our North Star. It is our, you know, uh, our, our beautiful design uh, that is, you know, sort of the American system. What um, so tell me about uh, you have a uh, uh, you're going to do some armed forces uh, series. Uh, your first series is, I believe, a naval series. Tell me about tell me about who you're celebrating um, in that first series. Well, the uh, the early naval heroes. Uh, I've got it. Here's the uh, box. There, that's the uh, the naval series. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's got Oliver Hazard Perry as the first one in the series. Uh, uh, he's the hero of the Battle of Lake Erie. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to do Stephen Decatur, John Paul Jones, John Adams will be in there, John Barry, um, James Lawrence, all these uh, obscure folks. P- people probably know John Adams and John Paul Jones, maybe, uh, but uh, the other ones are equally as fascinating men, brave, um, and um, uh, then we're going to do the Marines second, uh, and then we'll do uh, the Army, um, and then uh, the uh, Air Force, Space Force, and then uh, the Coast Guard will follow up there. And Hamilton, of course, would be large in that um, in that uh, Coast Guard series. And so the Battle of Lake Erie is probably not something people have thought about today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the, uh, no. the anniversary was just last week. Uh, tell me, tell me. Story of the Battle of Lake Erie, uh, because I think, you know, this this is the purpose of your company uh, is to produce fine cigars, which they are. I've had several, and but it's at also at the same time, it is to tell American history. So so this is an opportunity, John. Well, uh, Oliver Hazard Perry was the son of a couple of extraordinary um, parents. Um, uh, he's also the brother to. Uh, Matthew Perry, who actually was went into Edo Bay, uh, uh, Tokyo Bay, as it's called now, and uh, opened up the Japanese after scaring them to death. Uh, but uh, uh, his father, uh, Oliver Hazard Perry, was actually um, um, the son of uh, James, uh, excuse me, Raymond uh, Perry, and uh, he served in the Revolutionary War. Was actually prisoner on the Jersey prison ship, which was, uh, and he escaped uh, uh, miraculously. He would have been certainly died 8,000 men more people died on that ship than died the rest of the war it's amazing but um um he he gets command of a, of a squadron on Lake Erie um there are nine ships in his um uh, his squadron six in the British squadron uh his ships are under gun compared to the others uh his strategy was to actually go in the line of battle and go underneath their long guns and uh, use his carronades which is the shape of the cigar right here um, that's a carronade. It's a short, uh, short cannon that's uh, designed to be fired uh, in short distances from uh, the upper deck. Devastating power. Uh, but he had to get underneath him. So he, he's on the James Lawrence, named after his friend who had just died. He's the famous uh, for saying, don't give up the ship. He has a flag made, Oliver Hazard Perry does, of his friend's uh, saying uh, that says, don't give up the ship. Uh, he gets destroyed on the Lawrence. Um, and uh, 
Uh, many people died. Many of the uh, sailors on board died. He convinces five uh, of the sailors to row him to the Niagara, which is uh, being held back uh, in the battle, controversially so. Uh, he takes command of that, raises the don't give up the ship flag, and then goes into the middle of the uh, of the battle. Uh, he's firing the carronades on both sides uh, of the ship uh, to devastating effect. He he destroys the Queen Charlotte and the Detroit, the two uh, two main battleships for uh, ships of the line for uh, the uh, uh, the British. And in the 500 year history of the uh, British Navy, uh, only a few times has, has an entire British squadron been captured. And this young a man in his 20s with verve and vigor, as they say, um, um, captured this, this squadron. And uh, it's, it's, his life is extraordinary. He was a, he was a, a diplomat. Uh, John Quincy Adams sent him on uh, what would be his last mission to uh, South America as part of the Monroe Doctrine that was being formulated at the time uh, to sort of to develop relationships there and to get people to behave in Europe out of the South American continent. And um, he captures catches yellow fever uh, while he's down there um, and uh, winds up dying. And this is in uh, 1817, not long after the battle, 1819, excuse me. And uh, uh, they sail him to a British island, and the governor on board actually is so awed by this this young man who defeated a squadron that he allows him to be buried there. They eventually reinter his body years later back to the United States, uh, Rhode Island, in fact. But uh, just an extraordinary man. And if, if you're a young, uh, I'm no longer a young man, but, uh, but I encourage my, my two sons to s- study these, these folks, uh, the, uh, especially the obscure ones, because the pedestal folks, as I call them, rightly so, uh, the iconic, you know, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, et cetera, are almost inaccessible because they, we've, we've created their, their, uh, their larger than life. But, um, but somebody like a, Perry or Roger Sherman or uh, these other folks are really accessible and their their lives are perfect to be emulated. Yeah, and I think something you said earlier just always um, reminds me uh, of what you know our standard should be. You know, we our job is not to just like exist uh, in this America uh, and, and enjoy the fruits. Uh, you know, I think our founding fathers said a very high bar for sacrifice to be quite honest and i think many people that have come after uh have have picked up that flag of sacrifice and 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 doing things inconvenient to maybe their own best interests in hopes of uh you know continuing the republic i think about you know abraham lincoln probably more than more than most but i think that's every citizen's charge is to you know, do something, do more uh, than we've ever done, and to, to ensure that the republic continues, um, because it's just it's such a unique experiment. You know, this self government, uh, this representative republic. Um, I think it's you know, if, if 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 we don't survive, I think you know, to the, the point, you know, human nature is such that you know we will devolve into you know despotism and 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 authoritarianism and and anarchy quite frankly and i i just don't think you know ronald reagan for example you know suggested that you know this 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 experience this liberty this you know this freedom that we have as an american people uh needs to be you know every every generation has to fight for it and has to ensure it for the next generation so it's uh you know i just i think it's this what you're doing um with your company uh, to both, you know, celebrate, uh, you know, tobacco and to, at the same time, uh, celebrate our found, you know, a, a lot of patriots. It's not just our founding fathers. Um, so, John, you have a uh, founding father series uh, coming up on the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Why don't you talk a little bit about what that series is going to look like and, you know, how maybe also talk about, uh, how you build a cigar to represent an individual. Well, yeah, I'm excited about that. That series will come out on July 4th, uh, 2026, the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. We're going to actually do all 56 founders in that, uh, uh, signers of the Declaration of Independence in that. So you'll get Caesar Rodney and, and uh, Button Gwinnett, yeah. and people that uh, are, are unknown virtually to everybody, unfortunately. But uh, 
Uh, and each one of those, we, I've already written the biographies of each. I've got them all done. So we're, we're working on the cigars now because we typically age, depending on the cigar, between a year and a half and two and a half years, depending on. So we have to be ahead of the game. So we're, we're, I'm going to try to have those. In fact, I've got some John Adams and some George Washingtons that are going to be, uh, they're going to be 10 years old at that time. So we'll have a couple of special editions uh, for those guys. But um uh, uh, we take seminal people in American history and honor them with a cigar, and each one mirrors their life and their personality, as I indicated before. And so, um, you know, it, it's uh, it, the Oliver Hazard Perry, for instance. Um, I think I described that, the you know, the battle. We wanted to get that uh, Brazilian rapper uh, because of his last mission, where he uh, uh, he unfortunately uh, uh, fell ill and died. But uh, um, it's got that wonderful pepper to it, which is, emulates the uh, pepper uh, and black pe- powder on the on the battle. It's it it's very smoky in the beginning. It almost it it, it titillates the uh, the sinuses perfectly. Uh, not that you can imagine being on that deck when all those cannon were firing, but uh, we try to get as, at least a, a hint of it. Uh, it's got wonderful oak. Uh, it's in the shape of the carronade, as I indicated. It's um, it's a it's a short torpedo, uh, five and a half inches rather than six. So. Uh, each cigar is just like that. The, the George Washington is big and bold like he was. Uh, the Madison's diminutive in size. It's a Robusto. It's got a mild um, flavor to match his mild disposition, but it's very complex like he was. Um, the uh, the Adamses are, are, are torpedoes uh, because they were both into the breach. Uh, the uh, Patrick Henry has a little bit of bite to him, but uh, it's very smooth after that. Uh, so we, we try to... Uh, try to create each one. Every cigar has a story to tell. That's our our motto. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, and and you each each person that you dedicate a cigar to, you write a to your point a ten thousand word or so um, biography on, on them, and that's how you learn the, uh, their personalities, and that's how you then express the personalities in these cigars you're building. It's just I I, I think it's an extraordinary uh, extraordinary. Um, uh, project and I appreciate you, uh, you know, you know, not dedicating your entire fortune to that, but certainly, <laughs> you know, kind of that be, uh, you know, one of your one of your companies that you're that you're super passionate about. And I always enjoy any time we can spend together and talking about uh, these, um, you know, these important figures. I I know that it's going to take many 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 more years and thousands of more people before there's a matt whitaker cigar but i look forward to <laughs> someday <laughs> when you get to the acting attorney general uh, in the trump administration i'll, I'll enjoy that as well <laughs> well i'll tell you this i am doing a bill of rights series coming up uh, on that anniversary i like it like you indicated before i kind of plan these out several years in advance and so uh I need to uh, save the Fourth Amendment. Maybe I'll make that the Whitaker. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Uh, so, what um, you know, people want to learn more about your company. You're at LibertyCigars.com. I'll make sure I include that in the show notes. Um, do you have a a retail store or a smoke shop that people can visit, or is that in the plans? Uh, that's in the plans. We're, we're online now. We ship every day all over the world um, uh, and uh, to England, of all places. We've got several clients that love our uh, founder series there, uh, oddly enough. But um, uh, we're building a shop. It's going to be 16 months before it's done. Uh, we did have a smaller shop, but it was just too small. Um, and uh, we didn't have a lounge with it, so um, it was only 500 square feet. But uh, we're um, we're building a uh, brand new building uh, it's 30,000 feet I'm going to take four of it on the and have a rooftop terrace and um, uh, nice nice uh, dinner menu lunch menu so it's going to be a really nice place but that's that's 16 months out well that'll be amazing I can't wait to uh, come to the grand opening and uh, and, and, and and support and uh, and really promote uh, what you're doing I think it's so important well I think we're you know uh, running out of time, John. I really appreciate. There's so much more we can talk about. Yeah, I look forward uh, to doing this again, uh, and you know, talking through some of, you know, some of these important historical figures in American history. It's just, uh, it's crucial we don't forget uh, their sacrifice. Uh, it's crucial we don't forget, uh, you know, American history, where we're coming from, because uh, I think that really sets the 
vector for where we're going uh, as a republic. So thank you for your time. Uh, you know, again, visit Mr. Adams and his uh, website, LibertyCigars.com. I'll link in the show notes. Uh, if you want to you know, watch this, if you're listening to it on uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere good podcasts are distributed, you can watch this as well. Uh, it's on YouTube and uh, Rumble, but most importantly, it's every show I do is on Whitaker.tv, and it premieres 7 p.m. on CPAC now. So, John, thanks for your time. Very much appreciate it. We'll do this again soon, all right? My pleasure. Thank you.